Hey my friends, how you doing? Welcome back. So I've got one more thing that I want to share before we dive into some actual making of some projects focusing on, we're going to focus on sound. But before we do that, one thing that I want to share, we just took a look at the, the concept of a variable, which is very kind of basic concept, something we're going to use over and over again in almost every project. But if we want to have a variable that has more than one value, what does that look like? And the reason I'm sharing this is twofold. So I've done lots of classes and workshops and blogs and videos on um, taking a look at comparing Scratch to Python. We've used Python with Lego EV3. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff with Raspberry Pis and the microbits, the same thing. And there's always seems to be, to be a little bit of confusion when it comes to this work. So I want to get into this here just real quick and just explain a couple things here. And so what I want to do here, we're just going to create um, a new project. And what we're going to be focusing on is the concept of an array or a list. They are essentially the same thing. Um, the differences are whether we're in block-based coding or we're in Python. Um, array, list. So in the book, Microbit for the Mad Scientist, he talks about how you can create this. He does stuff with, with colors, which will be just fine. Um, and so what we want to do here is just explain this concept for you so you can see this here just a little bit in case if you look at the book or you don't have the book um, in front of you. So one of the things that we want to do is have a variable, but have it be more than one value. So we're going to head here to values. We're going to go right here and we're just going to use his example from the book because I think it makes the most amount of sense. Uh, but we could do this with anything. I'm just going to call this colors and we're going to just use this set block kind of like we just did in the previous video taking a look at the variable for the counter. Now what we can do in here though as opposed to before where we gave it a value of zero or we had it change uh, numerically every time we pressed a button what we want to do is that we can go through and we can give this more than one option. So this is also going to touch on something here too, like if you're not sure where the block fits, but you know the concept, and so that's oftentimes the case, someone who's done programming before, they're like, I know that I need an array, but I don't know what category. You can go right here in this search, because what these categories do show you the most common, but they're not going to give you every single word that you want or phrase that, that you need in here. So if you go up here to the search, if I type array, it's going to give me these combos. Now you can see here um, what it's done is before when we did that set that variable to zero, now we can see here um, that we've got a different block. So when I drag this out, you're going to see that this looks very similar to when we identify this color variable to one value. Here, look at, there is a block in there that allows us to have an array. In text coding, it's called a list. In Scratch, it's called a list. So we don't actually need this one, so we're going to go ahead and delete this out of here. I just put that in there so you can, can see the differences. Okay, so let's create a variable here. Let's call it number. We're going to clear this out, okay, and we're just going to add, let's see, we can make this two, three, four, five. So the reason that I'm showing you this is that when we have a list or an array in our code, the numbers correspond to their location. So what I mean by that is that this is actually position zero, position one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if I didn't want that, I actually wanted to start with my counting of, say I would want to randomly pick a number between one and ten, or you know, in this case, one and five. This here technically is position zero. This is position one, position two. So this oftentimes confuses students and educators for the first time that the numbers in here are actually not correlated to the position. 
if that makes sense. So again, this is position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and these could be any numbers that we want. Then what happens then is if we were to use this on button A press, okay, we could sit here then and go, uh, we're going to show the string. Let's see, let's, uh, there we go. We are going to add in here this block here. So we don't want list, we want numbers, okay, to get the value at. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick random, okay? Um, so if I search for random in here, I think it's purple. There it is you can see that in here I can pick between 0, I don't want through 10 now, I want 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 0 through 4 okay so now when I push A on the micro bit it's going to randomly pick one of these numbers, so there it is, there's number 5 okay, there's 3 and it's going to randomly pick these numbers in there so this is just to kind of show you the concept of an array or a list. If we were to write this here in Python, we're going to start there from micro bit. Oh, make sure we always got that in there. Okay, we're going to import now. Now we haven't got into this, but what we're doing here, this import ramp is going to be bringing in um, a library. Essentially what this is is just a whole bunch of code that we don't have to write but this is going to give us a whole bunch of new commands at our disposal for writing code and so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a variable like we did before just in the, the make code okay and what I'm going to do in here now is we've got to use these brackets and what I want to put in here okay it's going to look like this And then we want to close that out with our brackets. So this is just like the list that we created in our, our make code here. Okay. And then the same code that we wrote earlier, while true, this forever loop here. Okay. If button A. Okay. Let's see. We want uh, dot was pressed. There we go. Was pressed. All right, then we want to display in a scroll fashion like we did before the numbers randomly. So there's our random. This is where we get this, this random integer. Okay, and we got 0 to 3. We're going to close this out. I hope I got 30 in there, don't I? I don't want 30. I want here, I want this to be a parentheses. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this micro bit in here. So what we've got here is this forever loop, when the button A is pressed, it's going to display the variable numbers. Okay. And this is random integer. This is that random block we put in make code. All right. And we want this actually to be uh, zero. And let's make this from zero to four so we get all those numbers in there. And so now if I flash this, I'll go ahead and let me set up my phone here so you can see the video of this. We should have, if done properly, random numbers. Oh, we have an error. Let's see, what did we do wrong? Let's take a look here. Let's take a look. So we're going to go here to our repel. It's going to tell us line 9. Bracket there. Display scroll. Numbers. Random. Oh, there it is. I spelled this wrong. I didn't put the right part in. Right there it is. Random integer. Now... 
let's get out of there. I'm showing that for you because this happens all the time. All the time. So just you got to get used to uh, learning how to debug. Let's give this a shot now. There we go. We got a five there. We got another five. There's a four. Four. Boy, it's pretty random. Three. <laughs> four. There we go. So you can see now we're starting to get some different numbers here as they're coming through. Okay. And this here is how we can start to create a list or an array. This is going to start to expand our coding, especially when we get in here next to the sound and start to make some music and do some different things like that. We're going to rely on list or arrays, depending if you choose to go with block or with Python. So it's the final concept that I wanted to share before we move into some actual building of projects. Um, but I want you to, to play around with this a little bit, check it out, see if you can have it pick words. You can maybe try to do shapes. Um, go back to that make code and and have it as opposed to you know where we were taking a look at uh, arrays can you try and figure out how to make that a shape instead um, what are some things that you can do to kind of make that work and see if we can figure it out all right my friends share your code your questions your thoughts your concerns and until next time stay awesome peace